What's up, Runaways? We are back, and we are here to break down our most recent trip, which was... CC. Now my wheels in motion and my windows open with the wind blowing in my hair. I'm driving down the highway, gonna do this my way, I can feel... <laughs> Alright, so if you watched our previous video you just saw that we just took a trip to DC for my birthday um, this was a great trip for me because one I'm a history buff so everything there was amazing and out of this world um, and it was a one-of-a-kind experience so if you have not been to DC and you love history you need to go even if you don't love history there's things for you <laughs> because guess what I don't love history so you can't even name two presidents Obama and Trump. Okay, so our two most <laughs> recent presidents. Are okay. George Washington and President oh. Lincoln. Oh my gosh. That, that was, was four. All right, so let's break down some numbers for you. So Washington, D.C. was actually the one and only trip this year that we actually paid for for the flights. So for our flights, we went with American Airlines because they did have an awesome deal. It was, let's see, 123.60 round trip. Um, for each of us, so that was a great deal. From Utah, so that's flying from Utah to DC. Um, for our hotel, we went to a home show here in Utah where they had a booth for the, the Wyndham. Wyndham Suites, um, where we basically um, just filled out a form, scheduled a day. We went and took a tour of a Wyndham in our area in Park City. Um, and from there, they gave us three free nights basically at any Wyndham we wanted. The Wyndham Hotel that we stayed at, there was a lower uh, lower level Wyndham, so it wasn't amazing. It was pretty similar to... Yeah, just about equal La Quinta, anything like that, although there is some nice La Quinta. Yeah, there's some nice ones of those, but this it's, was... Yeah, it balances It wasn't nice too ones. bad. We were just there to sleep and shower for the most part. Mm -hmm. We were going to be out and about, so it, it did us fine. Um, but the hotel that we actually booked while we were there, was in Georgetown, so it was right in the heart of the city. We were right next to a subway station. Uh, we were walking distance to CVS, mm -hmm. to restaurants, and it was a perfect location. It was so much better. We were paying a lot in the Uber, which was so unnecessary. When we switched to Embassy Row, like she was saying, we could literally just walk and get breakfast or walk and get on the Metro, and it just made things a lot easier for us. Do yourself a favor, spend a little bit extra money, get a hotel right in the city, and then use the metro. Use Utilize yeah. the metro. It was, I want to say it was $13.50 for a day pass. Um, and to think about it, that's probably one Uber ride there. So you may as well use that metro and pay for to get anywhere all day long. Uh, one of the things that I really enjoyed uh, in DC that was my favorite part was actually the uh, monuments tour. We did our tour at night because I did a lot of research to try to find the best tour and everybody actually recommended to take the tour at night that there was just something about the monuments being lit up during that time that just made it even better. So we decided to do it then and I absolutely loved it. Our tour guide was amazing. He was knowledgeable. He was funny. He kept it entertaining. Uh, we moved real quick. So we were on the tour bus. We got to see a lot of stuff throughout the city. And then we jumped off and we walked through the monuments mm -hmm. um, and got a lot of pictures. And so I really, really liked that. The best part about that is while I was looking, I found the one I wanted. And then I just hopped on Groupon real quick and we got a Groupon for that. And so we actually bought, uh, got two tickets for the price of one. So that saved us a lot of money there. My favorite part of the trip was the zoo. Um, the zoo is free as well as many other things in DC. Um, but with this being a free zoo, like this was the, probably the best zoo I've ever been to. Um, there was parts in the zoo where there was just free range animals like sloths, birds, um, little tiny monkeys. And then also above your head, there was a line where the orangutans would, um, be walking over you. So that was pretty cool. Um, you could just see everyone studying the animals and these animals were active. Um, as you can also see in our video, there was a line that was roaring and I've never seen that in my life, so it was pretty cool. She said it is free. Anything with the word Smithsonian in DC is free. So all the museums, the Natural History Museum. One of the things that we recommend uh, after touring the Natural History Museum 
is do a little bit of research and just figure out what you want to see and narrow it down. Um, unless you're going to be in DC for a month, there's no way that you're going to get through all of the museums uh, and enjoy them. The Natural History Museum within itself had so many other museums. Not all of them you're going to be interested in, so like she was saying, definitely just look and see what one you're going to want to do. So one of the coolest things that we got to do um, as well was tour the White House and we got to tour the White House on my birthday, which was really cool. Uh, but in order to tour the White House, you need to contact your state representative at least three months in advance. Um, for us, we just went onto the website for our state representative. There was a little link that said tour the White House. We clicked on it. We filled out the paperwork for it. Um, you do have to do a background check in order to go to the White House. The things you'll see inside the White House are things you will never see. Like a lot of people don't get to see inside the White House. So to be able to tour that um, was just really cool. Um, it's a really beautiful build building. There's so much detail inside there and even outside. So if you don't particularly want to tour the inside, definitely get a view from the outside, which we also got a view on the night tour mm -hmm. um, that was really cool as well. So many cool things in DC. I'm not a history buff, but I there was a lot of cool things. Um, one thing that I really enjoy to learn about is the Holocaust and the museum in DC about the Holocaust is so it's like a different experience. It gives you a different type of feeling. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't record in there as you guys could see in our video because we just or not see whatever. But. Um, because it's just something that you just take in and it's just, I I feel that it isn't respectful to record something like that. So um, we just made that decision to not record in there and to really just take in all the information. But during the four levels of the Holocaust Museum, you have this pamphlet with this person's name on it. Um, and as you go through each level, you turn a page and you get to learn about this person's life. So you learn before the Holocaust what they did, if they were married, uh, or if they were kids in school, if they were doing, you know, what they were doing prior to the Holocaust. And then as you move to the next floor, you learn about what they're doing while it's starting, what's going on, are you know, uh, what they're hearing about it, um, what's happening, and then you turn again and they're going to concentration camps or they're hiding. Um, and you're you're reading about this as you're going. So you're not only are you looking and hearing all the the images and the sounds during the Holocaust, but you're actually following a person that is living through it. And then when you get to the bottom level, you turn the last page and you basically get to learn if your person lived or died. And after you feel learning, like yeah, you feel like you're just walking that journey with them, like while you're reading all the facts, yeah. because as the floors go, the dates are changing. So you're just learning about this person. Uh, Shaylee's person actually lived um, through the Holocaust, and mine actually died in the concentration camps. So that was a kind of a, a real surreal experience. So if you're in DC, definitely check out the Holocaust Museum. It was free as well. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really think it's a museum that takes small kids. So if you are traveling with a family um, and small kids that you maybe. know run around and stuff like that, maybe don't take them. Or, or split up. Half you guys go at one time, half you guys go at the yeah. other. And it is really cold in there because there is a lot of, a, a lot of artifacts. Right? Artifacts. A lot of stuff in there that they're trying so, to preserve. So, I mean, for me... Bring a jacket. Yeah, bring a <laughs> bring jacket. A jacket. Uh, when we do tell you these facts about how much we paid um, for things, just know that they are going to vary. There's going to be different deals depending on which city you're flying out of and which city you're flying into. Um, so always just keep that in mind. And also we do have a giveaway coming soon. So we will link our Instagram somewhere here and go follow the Instagram to get an update on that. If you watch our video, thank you. Uh, and if you like this video, if you want more uh, insider info, definitely hit that subscribe button, hit the notification button, uh, because our next video actually is going to be one that we have gotten a lot of questions about. And a lot of people I think out there have a lot of questions about is how do you take your family to, to Walt Disney World? So definitely subscribe and make sure that you keep running away with us.